In today's interview, I brought on Dr. Brian Huffling, who is a friend and also a professor at mine at Southern Evangelical Seminary. I brought him on to talk about what I would consider to kind of be a fringe topic, which is about aliens and UFOs. Though I got him on to talk about this particular topic, Dr. Huffling talks about a variety of different topics on his YouTube channel, and you guys would just be doing yourself a favor to check it out. There are so many rich theological things that I have learned from him, from the professors at this seminary, and it's available to you as well to check out. You don't need a seminary degree to learn the things uh, that Dr. Huffling teaches because he has his own YouTube channel. I have had so much spiritual growth because of the men and women that are involved in this seminary. And I just really want you guys to have access to this kind of stuff because it's really helped me as well. But for today's topic, I am asking Dr. Huffling about aliens and UFOs and just the biblical Christian perspective on it. And we talk about a variety of topics such as what are aliens? How does that fit into a Christian worldview? And I know that people in the new age have uh, really been caught up in this kind of stuff. So it might be refreshing for you to hear a Christian perspective on this. One thing in particular that I really enjoyed that Dr. Huffling brought up was the fact that it's not just Christians that have this perspective. It's very interesting to see that there's naturalistic atheists out there that have very specific reasons for believing what these entities are. And it looks eerily similar to a lot of the spiritual stuff that we would see in the Christian religion. So keep a lookout for that. I hope you guys are blessed by this interview. I really enjoyed interviewing my friend, Dr. Brian Huffling. Hey everybody, I'm really pleased and honored to have this guest on today, Dr. Brian Huffling. I brought him on today to talk about a topic that I've never talked about on my channel before, uh, but he actually got me really interested in it all over again. It's about aliens and demons and UFOs and, you know, the fringe stuff that a lot of Christians don't talk about. Uh, so uh, Dr. Huffley, I just want to thank you so much for coming on today and talking with me. Yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, for sure. Um, first, actually, you're a professor at my seminary at Southern Evangelical Seminary, and I took a logic course with you. What else are you qualified in besides being a bona fide professor. Uh, what's your educational background? Why are you interested in this topic? Okay, so I have uh, my, my bachelor's in history with a minor in Bible from Lee University. Mm -hmm. And I have a master's degree. I was kind of crazy and did three majors and did uh, apologetics and biblical studies and philosophy at, at SES. Wow. Then I stood around and did uh, the PhD in philosophy of religion there as well. Mm -hmm. And I'm a chaplain in the Air Force Reserves, and I just finished a master's degree uh, in military operational art and science with a concentration in joint warfare, where I wrote my thesis or research project on UFOs, they call them UAPs now, and <laughs> national security. Mm -hmm. um, I've been in several church staffs and uh, been teaching for a while now. Wow. That's, you wear many hats. That's a, that's a lot. Did yeah. you just, do you just like learning? I do, yeah. I'm, I kind of see myself as a lifelong learner, and I just, you know, might get another PhD one day or thought about it, and it's just fun. I really enjoy it. It's just, <laughs> it's just, it's just fun to be able to learn. And um, you have to take programs in the Air Force to uh, between captain and colonel. You got to take certain programs, and for this last one, I did see there just check off a box or get a master's degree. So I went and did that too. And why not? <laughs> nice. Yeah, and I've actually seen you in action too. I went to the, uh, I think it was. The name is slipping me. Uh, Southern Evangelical Seminary in Char in Charlotte, they have a conference every every year, oh, and yeah, I the saw National conference. Yeah, yes, and it was. I saw you in a debate. Um, I forget what you are debating on. It was, was that last year? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was with a friend of mine. He's from Notre Dame, uh, James Sturba. He's an atheist. Yes. And we debated on uh, whether or not God, whether a good God is logically possible. Yes. Yeah. And that was really cool. So, I mean, again, you wear many hats. So uh, everybody, just so you know, be sure to uh, check out his channel as well. Uh, Dr. Huffling has a YouTube channel and it's a wealth of information. You just got it started. So, but there's still some stuff there that you guys can, can learn from. I'll leave it a link in the description below for you guys to check out. But first, let's get right into it. So the topic I have you on today for is uh, something I'm interested in, but I don't know a lot about. And I'm my background is in the New Age, 
And I remember growing up hearing a lot about aliens, uh, particularly in the New Age, ancient aliens, things like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had someone close to me have some pretty strange stuff happen to them, and they attribute it to aliens. They thought maybe this is another life force from another planet that's making these things happen to me. And they weren't too concerned about it because they thought maybe they were, you know, kind or just higher spiritual beings. Uh, until recently, we really haven't seen a lot of Christians talk about this topic. What would you say aliens and UFOs are in your opinion? Well, the the majority of them, like 95% plus or minus roughly, are they can be explained naturally through you know, mis misidentifications, weather, mm. um, those kind of things. But the fewer percent that are, are really actual UFOs, what Hugh Ross calls RUFOs or residual UFOs, uh, they, could, they could either be, if you don't know what they are, they could be either be a, um, a craft that we have as, as the U.S. government, or uh, it could be a craft from another um, country, mm. or it could be something that, you know, one of the main theories is the extraterrestrial hypothesis or aliens, alien spacecraft. And then the other view is interdimensional, which would include physical beings or spiritual like demonic type beings. Hmm. Um, so I, I tend to argue that the, the fit and there are some, what I'm interested in is really is there are non-Christian academic researchers who think that uh, are saying the same kind of things that Christians are saying that hmm. they, they might not be physical. They don't seem to be physical and they exhibit a lot of, characteristics that we tend to associate with demonic forces even non-christians say that who are professional researchers on ufos so i think that there's a good case to be made that they are demonic and spiritual in nature wow that's interesting um you're writing about this as well right yeah i'm taking the writing i did for the air force and i'm going to make it into a book interesting so uh when will that be out <laughs> i don't know i gotta finish <laughs> i've got i got somebody interested an agent interested but i, I have to figure out you know i gotta finish writing it um, I'm coming off the book now. I'm just trying to launch out. And then as soon as that's um, off the pad, I guess I can, you know, which it almost is off the pad. I can start on this one again. Yeah. Usually. And not to pry into it because I know it's in the early stages, but what will you write about in it? What are some things that you will cover? Well, one of my interests in this actually is the is the U.S. history, especially as it relates to the Air Force, because mm -hmm. it's just really interesting to me as to how, you know, what all started with the Air Force. The Air Force started in September of 1947. But, you know, Roswell and Kenneth Arnold, that really started off the, the uh, modern UFO age, started in 1947 in the summer. So when the Air Force became a, an entity, it was already embroiled in all this UFO stuff. Hmm. Uh, and so the history there is really interesting. It's, it's undeniable what was going on. There are some national security implications. That, like, like they, for example, had um, UFO sightings over bases, and then right then they had about 20 or so intercontinental ballistic nuclear missiles uh, go offline. And of course, we see a lot of the stuff coming out now with the Navy and Congress had its first hearing last year in 50 years since the Air Force Project Blue Book. So there's a lot of stuff. So I want to go into that. Yeah. And then I want to look at the different theories uh, that are out there and then make a case for the demonic um, aspect of it as well. And there's one aspect that no Christian is going into um, and it, it has a lot to do with our apologetic methodology for how we argue for things like the resurrection and how we argue for UFOs. There's a lot of similarities there. Um, and I want to go into that as well. Yeah. Let, you know what? Let me parse that out a little bit more. What do you mean by that? Um, <laughs> what, yeah, that's so interesting. Um, nobody's talking about it. What, what do you mean? Tell me more. Um, what? <laughs> yeah, I'm so interested. Yeah, I did my I did a conference talk on this last year at our, at our national conference, which I guess you were at. And um, the way that we argue for, for the resurrection, the, the kinds of reasons that we have that we give as, as apologists mm -hmm. are the same kinds of reasons that we give for um, people having UFO experiences or especially abduction experiences. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the objections and even the responses to those are going are gonna to be very similar. Uh, so this, the way in which we argue, the kinds of objections and the kinds of responses are kind of tit for tat. And so that has some pretty interesting implications for apologetics. Yes, I'm being a little vague on this because um, this hasn't been developed before. I'm just kind of developing this now, and I, I want to uh, be able to do, to do a good job. And and um, just a little teaser there. It'll, it'll, it'll come out more. Yeah, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm definitely interested. So we'll have to keep a lookout for that, especially when your book comes out. It would be great to kind of 
um, read up on that and have you parse it out more for your readers. Um, now, okay, so let's talk about aliens themselves. Uh, this is something I remember growing up with. Uh, I mean, I say I'm in the, I was in the new age, but I was more into new thought, which is, is different, yeah. but people that have been in the new age, uh, they really got caught up in a lot of, well, I, I call it ancient aliens, but like theosophy, right. a lot of, mm -hmm. a lot of the stuff that we have in the new age can really be traced back to Helena Blavatsky and theosophy and all of these, these interdimensional being ideas. What are your thoughts about aliens? What are they? And how do you make sense of people's experiences with what they would consider to be an alien entity? And this, again, is what got me interested because you've got a lot of very high level academic researchers yeah. who mm -hmm. are not Christian and even explicitly not Christian uh, saying the same things that we're saying as mm -hmm. Christians. So, for example, uh, you've got some who think they're physical beings and some who don't. So, but but a lot of them really don't think they're aliens. A lot of the, like John Keel, G. Allen Hynek, he worked with the Air Force. He was a top scientist with the Air Force during Project Blue Book, even before them. Mm -hmm. uh, Jacques Vallée, who was very well known, he actually had his, the character in, in Close Encounters of the Third Kind, was patterned after him, hmm. uh, the, the French character. So he's, he's probably the, the, the top ufologist today. Um, and he makes really good arguments that these are not and really cannot be aliens in the sense of, you know, coming from another planet. Uh, for various reasons. Hmm. Uh, for example, he thinks that as a naturalist, you know, he's not, he doesn't believe in God, at least he doesn't seem like he believes in God. He says for the, the chances of beings to just come about randomly like us through evolution, who have the same anatomical structure, same ability to see on the wavelength we see, the same ability to, to hear things, hmm. it's just not going to happen mathematically speaking. And he's in a unique position to say these things because he he is um, an astrophysicist and also a computer scientist. Hmm. So he, he knows how to take the data and collate it and systematize it very well. Um, lots of problems with interdimensional travel. He says things like, well, we have so many occurrences and, and opposed, supposed landings and um, abductions and those kind of things that it just doesn't make any sense for that number of, of sightings, landings, and whatever to happen if there really were aliens from somewhere else. And... They're different. They, they they're different species. They look different. They're, they're, their craft are different. So it would have happened had to have happened several times uh, on different planets or whatever. And so it just doesn't make a lot of sense. He, he goes more evidence now. If you want more, I can give you more. Hmm. Um, no, that, that was good. Yeah. And then the fact that that they do things that seem to defy physics, like fly at thousands of miles an hour and perform right angle turns, 180 degree turns, just disappear and reappear. Uh, they don't seem to, to be physical beings and even these non-christian ufologists especially Jacques Vallée and John Keel mm -hmm. are saying that um if you heard of the Mothman prophecies that's John Keel he he's really well known in the, in the para, paranormal circles um but you also have aspects of not only the immaterial aspects of of these beings whatever they are mm -hmm. uh they are ex explicitly anti-christian not just anti-religious but anti-christian yeah. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the writings that you've alluded to, things like that are in the New Age or New Age are very similar to, to things in ufology, uh, explicitly downplaying the deity of, of Jesus. Um, they, they, a lot of the, the phenomena parallel um, U, UFOs and the New Age. So, for example... Uh, there was a lady in the 19, late 1940s who was collating a lot of this information, uh, and, and Keel cites her, and she says, many of the UFO reports now being published in the popular press recount alleged incidents that are strikingly similar to demonic possession and psychic mm -hmm. phenomena, which has been long been known to theologians and parapsychologists. Mm -hmm. So there's just a lot of... People who are into the UFO stuff or have abductions or really close encounters, um, oftentimes either themselves are somehow in New Age occultic type stuff or their parents were or something like that. There's just a lot of similarities, poltergeist activity. Mm -hmm. It's not usually just UFOs or abductions. There's a lot of, very, a lot of similarity between UFO stuff, alien stuff, and um, New Age occultic behaviors and activity. Yeah, and it's really interesting that you would have a naturalist kind of look into this. I wonder what his explanation is then, you know, for poltergeist activity and people claiming to see, you know, interdimensional beings, so to speak. You know, these, he, these 
he yeah. thinks that and he's a little a little unclear on this, but he thinks that you can that they are manipulating space time. They're not from they're not from a different area of the universe. They're from a different time or space, and that they have learned to pop in and out of different dimensions and and manipulate things. And in some places, he says that this is kind of psychological, and he's giving us that the, the aliens or whatever the beings are are giving us what they want us to see, like on the screen, like like a TV. Because the, the TV has an analogy. Yeah. That you know you see it on the TV, you can't tell what's real or not real. So people are are seeing, in a sense, in their mind, these things, and they can't tell if they're real or not. And so he thinks they just have some kind of manipulative power. Same thing as as demonic forces would. Interesting. Okay. And so um, obviously you believe that they're demonic forces of some kind. You would disagree that they're uh, literal alien beings from a different time. Right. He, yeah. He doesn't think they're aliens. He thinks that they're, and I wouldn't either, uh, yeah. but he thinks they could be humans or some other beings, but they're not from afar off. They're from right here being able to pop in and out of different interdimensional doors, as it were. Well, that's really mean for them to do that to people then. <laughs> like, what? He does see them as malevolent. Yeah. yeah, and 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 it's interesting. A lot of these guys do. John Keel, Heine, a lot of these guys. These these beings are even people who, who come out and kind of in, in favor of it, like Whitley Strieber, his his well known communion book, says you know these are really they're they're deceitful. Um, you know, Valley says they want to control. You. I, I used to wonder why would aliens care or why would demons care if we believe in aliens or not. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I started reading these non Christians saying that what they want to do is control your thoughts. And they want to distort your worldview and change your world and what you believe in. Well, that's exactly what, what a demon would want to do if you're a Christian. And then people who are Christians in these documentaries that have been coming out, these military ones, said that, well, yeah, I saw a UFO, and it was a real faith shaker. So if people, if, if the demons can make you think for whatever reason that either you're not special or the gospel or Bible is not true because there yeah. are other beings out there, then that'll plant seeds of doubt and change your worldview. That's, that's just, just what they want to do. Yeah, and you alluded to some, or yeah, you alluded to something earlier where these beings don't particularly care for Jesus. Right. And I had a I can't it was years ago. I had a friend who was telling this story where they were having one of these episodes. And I can't recall exactly why they called out to the name of Jesus. Like why did they call out to Jesus? But the minute that he did, it was like they just dissipated. And so he that was actually whenever he started looking into Christianity was because, wow, why do these things respond to that name but not mm-hmm. anything else? Yeah. I was wondering if you could parse that out a little bit more. Yeah, so Joe Jordan is a well-known researcher with Mutual UFO Network or MUFON. Mm-hmm. They're one of the top civilian academic research organizations on UFOs. Uh, he works with them. He became a Christian through his interaction with UFOs, and his, his girlfriend got him, um, you know, would, would teach him about Christianity. He, would, he, would, he was converted right. a few years ago. Hmm. Um, and he has a, a really good book out called uh, Piercing the Cosmic Veil, You Shall Not Be Afraid of the Terror by Night. Hmm. And he also has a website by the name, piercingthecosmicveil.com. And he has, he has, in the book he has at least scores, but he, thinks, he says he has hundreds of testimonies of people who have claimed to have stopped the abduction experience by calling on the name of Jesus. Now, he, he asked people in MUFON, now what's going on here? Because people, you've all said you can't stop these things. And yet when people say the name of Jesus and call out to Jesus, these, these experiences stop in their tracks. Mm-hmm. And, and the response it got was, yeah, we know that, but that's religious, so we, we can't go there. So you do it. Wow. So he did it, and he, he has a book on it, a lot of research on it, and um, other people seem to know about it. And that's another reason why it seems to be demonic and not just alien, because mm-hmm. why would aliens be repelled at that name? For, and furthermore, th- these things are walking through walls. They're taking the person through walls, supposedly, through their crack and things. Uh, and when they have the experience, they're not necessarily leaving their chair. So people have been documented to have just stayed in their chair, in the car, in the living room, and say, they're coming for me, and they leave, and they come back, and they say, well, I was, I was on the ship. They know you're right there in the chair. And so this is very, it's very psychological in nature and, and all that. So yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of evidence that, that the, the name of Jesus stops that. Um, and even stuff like Mothman experiences. So I was, a funny story, I was, so Joe had, had read my blog article on all this stuff that I was mm-hmm. kind of writing on. And uh, we got been emailing and he wrote me one night, right as I turned on the Mothman <laughs> um, documentary. And Mothman and, and UFOs are, are very intertwined. 
And he says, I wanted to, just wanted to show you that there's, you know, the Mothman stuff has, there's power over that with Jesus' name too. And I was just watching the very thing he was talking about. So yeah, it's not just, it's not just the quote unquote aliens, but it's just this paranormal stuff in general. Interesting. So for the viewers that don't know, what is Mothman? I don't think I've ever heard of that. So Mothman is a creature that mm -hmm. exists. It's been sighted over different places, but it had a lot of um, sightings in West Virginia. And it's kind of a, um, it's hard to describe it. It's, it's sort of a uh, monster-like looking thing with red eyes. And people would see him alongside UFOs or it, UFOs and, and he would go along or it would go along together uh, in, in the same proximity and, and time. And so he went down there and uh, researched that and wrote a book on it. Wow. And a lot, again, a lot of other paranormal aspects going on with it. Um, so, but Mothman, they, it was termed that way. I think it was kind of a play on Batman because they're like a big moth in a sense. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty interesting. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's pretty interesting. So you go check it out if you want to check out Moth, the Mothman prophecies, Mothman. Um, but all these things are really intertwined, you know, ghosts, weird, really weird things happening um, alongside all this UFO and alien type stuff. Interesting. Yeah. So for it seems interesting that there might be. Is there a parallel, would you say, between people who have these experiences? And you mentioned this before that they are somehow invested in the new age or does this happen to just regular people and Christians alike? I mean, how, what kind of people experience these things? Well, there's been a lot of studies on that. And one fact that has come out is that there are uh, a lot of people have a connection with the occult and new age mm. um, experiences or they, they seek it out or they're you know, they'll, they'll play with the Ouija board or they'll, they'll do tarot cards. Like, like Whitley Strieber, for example, has admitted to, you know, I've, he was into tarot cards, he was into Zen, meditation, all that stuff with, you know, automatic writing, um, meditation, what was the thing that he was, he was saying, um, astral projection, all that kind of stuff, altered state of consciousness. All those things are, are you know, are doors to this. But there are people who have not been involved in it like children for example there have been a lot yeah. of cases where children have had these kind of abduction experiences hmm. but when you look a little closer a lot of times it's seen that their parents did and so the researchers are saying well the the children might not have been directly involved in the occultic door but their parents did or someone else very close to them did hmm. um, and it does happen to christians people christians can have these experiences um, I know several people who have seen UFOs, and it's really the ones that are closer, the closer encounters, like mm -hmm. seeing the actual beings, having interactions, being abducted, uh, being a contactee, those kind of things. Those are the ones where you really get more involved, or you see the connections. But there, you, you know, Christians can have these experiences, and they can see the, the lights in the sky, or, or a saucer, or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and statistically speaking... Um, you know, you've got a lot of followers. Uh, there are a lot of followers here. I, I would bet that you have a lot of followers in your channel who have seen a UFO, had an experience, or know someone who has. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you go to an average church and ask them, have you seen a UFO, or do you know someone who has, a lot of hands would go up. Mm -hmm. And this is an area where I think this is one area of interest uh, regarding this topic is the, the church has really dropped the ball on this kind of, of aspect of spirituality because there are a lot of people who are having experience don't know where to go or what to do. Mm -hmm. And it's really depressing when people have these kind of experiences. It's really depressing. It's, it's, um, it's dark, it's evil. Uh, even people who claim that it's, it's some kind of an enlightening process. They, they, they are depressed. A lot of people are suicidal. Mm -hmm. Some people have died in these kind of these experiences. Hmm. Um, it's just, it's bad. And the church needs to start, realizing that and and helping people in these regards yeah i think that it's one of those topics that's it's not talked about enough the only other person i've ever known to really dig into this was dr mike heiser right uh the late dr mike heiser and so it's it's nice to see someone else kind of you know of, of a certain pedigree tackle these things in a non-conspiratorial way yeah. i think that there's a a cerebral way to approach it where yeah, it's not yeah. Yeah, where it's not sensational. It's not, you know, a There's a stigma. Yeah, yeah there's, there's, there's a, a stigma. stigma. And I have to admit, so I, I was very Pentecostal when I was younger. I was in the word faith movement for a little while. Oh, you were? I didn't know oh, that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> so I came out of that when I was when I was a teenager. 
Uh-huh. And then um, I think I probably swung a little bit too far on the opposing spiritual type stuff. Uh-huh. And uh, you know, it's easy to do that. So now I'm seeing through my UFO studies that you know, there are a lot of spiritual things. This is pretty, pretty undeniable. Hmm. Um, and I think the church seems to just get away from, you know, not worry about the stigma. People are, are having these experiences and, and not just this, but stuff like this. And um, as Marcia Montenegro says, I know you, I think you know her, right? Yeah, she's a friend of well, mine, yeah. Yeah, well, as, as she had written in, in her book, I have it behind me. There's a there's a seductive aspect of all this to people, children especially. There's a lot yeah. of stuff that has come out in the last well several decades, and it just it draws people in. And that's one of the things that Keel says. It's very dangerous to. Yep. Yeah, have and a cr- she, curiosity about this. She has a point with the occult, um, and I think it was Hillary Ferrer, Hillary Morgan Ferrer. She's uh, Mama Bear Apologetics. She writes mm-hmm. uh, books for that, and right. She wrote something one time that I never forgot, and it was so very obvious, but she very succinctly put it that uh, people are drawn to the occult because it works. (laughs) Like there's a reason there's a seduction there. Uh, It's not because it there isn't it's not producing results. In other words, people are drawn to this because it is producing results. And so there lies the the seduction of it. so, yeah, and I think that Christians can kind of be involved in that, too, which kind of segues me yeah. into my last question for you. I, I'm especially, especially those that have come out of the New Age. And you mentioned, I call this the, pe- the pendulum problem, where people come out of the New Age and they are, they go one of two ways. Either they jump into like a hyper charismatic state where everything they did in the New Age is just Christianized. Okay. Or yeah. they go to this far, just super hard cessationist stance where anything that looked like what they came out of uh, in the new age is just evil, demonic. No, no, no. I don't want to be deceived again. And so it's just, they, they, they balance out usually as time goes on, but there's a pendulum there. And one other thing I'm finding that a lot of people that come out of the new age that do is they almost fight this urge to continuously research occultic stuff like this Uh uh, fresh out of the new age where it's just not, it's not time yet, you know, like you, enough time hasn't gone by where they're not biblically sound enough to kind of turn back and then look at it with a biblical lens. What would you say to Christians that do have an unhealthy uh, obsession with this topic or might have even had an experience that leads them to look into this in an unhealthy way? Yeah, so there's a there's a, a border here. If you're going to do apologetics or study stuff, you have to know what, what the other side says. Yep. Now, Ron mm-hmm. Rhodes used to say if for every cultic book he read he would read two christian books to kind of mm. counterbalance yeah. it mm. um and it is very let me let me read what john keel says again he's a, he's very anti-christian not just non-christian he's anti-christian hmm. there's enough in his eighth tower first chapter to, to make a whole apologetic conference from wow but here's what he says he says dabbling with ufos can be as dangerous as dabbling with black magic the phenomenon preys upon the neurotic the gullible and the immature Paranoid, schizophrenia, demonomania, and even suicide can result, and has resulted in a number of cases. A mild curiosity about UFOs can turn into a destructive obsession. For this reason, I strongly recommend that parents forbid their children from becoming involved. School teachers and other adults should not encourage teenagers to take an interest in the subject. So I actually had to check myself on this because I thought, am I getting too obsessed with it? Oh, interesting. Because, yeah. because you know, I, it has been for about three years. I've I've read a lot of stuff on it. I've talked to people. I've interviewed people. Um, and I've had to ask people. You know, is, you know, is, where is the line here with this? You say, well, the line seems to really be as is, is you're just researching. That's fine, but once you start kind of paying homage to it, like, well, maybe there's something to this. Let me let me check it out and kind of try it out, like you were saying. Let me just kind of try out and see what the results are. Mm-hmm. Once you start actually opening doors, that's where it gets dangerous. So if someone has an interest, that's one thing. If there's an obsession, that's where it gets dangerous. And especially if you start dabbling with things that seem innocuous, like like um, the Ouija board, well, let's think about Parker Brothers or whatever. If you start doing stuff that seems harmless, um, that's when you start opening doors that you don't, you don't realize you're opening. Um, and so I would just say, and if you've had an experience, this is where I think the church needs to come in. Mm-hmm. If you've had an experience, then... I think the answer to this is by uh, going to Christ and looking for deliverance. And if you're interested or if you're wondering if you had an experience, then I would encourage you to read Joe Jordan's book, Piercing the Cosmic Veil. Um, 
and talk to people who are mature in the faith, who have, have studied this or other kind of issues like this, who can help you. Don't keep it to yourself, because that, I think, is part of the deception. Well, you're, everything's okay. It's fine. Just keep going. It's like anything else. It's just one more step, one more step, and you're, you're way further back than you thought you would ever go. Mm-hmm. So don't do not do it alone. Don't, don't do this by yourself. Look for somebody to help you with that. Um, I'm happy to talk to anybody who's interested in talking about this as well. Um, just don't think that dabbling in it is, is something that, that is just an innocent kind of thing to do. Hmm. You have to kind of look for the, the indicators for what you're doing, why you're doing it, and what are the results. Yeah, the intention I think is spot yeah. on. Yeah. Right. No, yeah, I appreciate you covering that. Um is there anything else you want to add for my audience about this topic that you think that they should know or something of interest that uh you want to point out? I I would just say one we need to be aware of this, especially I think John Keel was right about parents and school teachers and and people who are, you know, have have influence over over young people and anybody for that matter. Mm-hmm. We need to be aware of the issue. Uh the people that mentioned there's a stigma. People think that if, if you mention the word UFO or alien that you're, you know, you're crazy or you've had one too many to drink or one whatever too much that you smoke or whatever. Mm-hmm. But there's just too much evidence to say it doesn't exist anymore. Mm-hmm. So we first, I think the first step is to be aware of it. And then the second step is to, okay, well, what, now what, what do you do? Mm-hmm. And so do your research. And I'm not saying not to research it, but do your research and be aware and just be cognizant of what your children are doing, what other people around you are doing. And just be aware of um, how far you are going or, or your children or, or whatever. So we just need to be aware of this topic, and we're not for the most part. Um, even people who were on the congressional hearing did not know a lot about it, which is very hmm. surprising. Hmm. And, and then the second thing is, is, is just to have a firm foundation in Christ and his word and to know how to handle not just UFOs and aliens, but also all, all those paranormal New Age occultic type stuff. We have to be parents, be uh, be accountability partners to people and, and be there for them. But I think the church is, is not going there because they're afraid they're going to look crazy. Yeah, or occultic for some people. Yeah. And what a lot of people I find want to do is they take like this strange, even occultic view of the Bible, where I remember talking to someone saying that, you know, there's aliens in the Old Testament. Right. And it's very typical of New Age and New Thought to kind of metaphysicalize the Bible, if you will. I had yeah. somebody mm-hmm. once call this bibliomancy. I'm like, that's a great way of putting it. <laughs> yeah, it's bibliomancy, where you take the Bible, but you, yeah. you look at it from this, uh, you know, theosophical, occultic lens, and you, like, Jesus was an alien at the exactly. end of the day. You beat me to it. I was, was going to say that. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you know what I'm getting at. And so um, that might be another interesting topic to talk to you about as well. Um, but yeah, so everybody watching, just make sure to check out the description. There's going to be a lot more information. I'm going to add that book as well that you mentioned. The uh, can't read my own, my own handwriting part. What is it? Piercing the Cosmic Piercing. Veil. My handwriting looks like praising the... Yeah. Yeah, I need to write a little bit better. But either way, yes, that will be in the description for everybody to check out. Also, Dr. Huffling's YouTube channel. And uh, keep in mind, guys, if you want more information on Southern Evangelical Seminary, you can go to my landing page. It's uh, ses.edu backslash Melissa for more information on that. If you're interested, they offer all kinds of degrees and certificates. It's been monumentally helpful for me and my spiritual walk. So be sure to check them out. Uh, Dr. Huffling, I want to thank you so much for coming on today and talking me, uh, talking to me about this topic. I'd like to have you back on at some point. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. It's been a lot of fun. It's nice right. seeing you in person. Yeah, I know, right? In person. <laughs> <laughs> in, yeah, in, right. Yeah. <laughs>